All right. Thank you all for being here. Uh, big win on Saturday night. Um, again, I want to thank our fans. I thought the, uh, the atmosphere was tremendous. Um, I thought that win uh, was really vital for our state university fans. Talked about it after the game. Proud of our team. Uh, didn't play our best, but found a way to win. I think that's a sign of a good football team. Um, you look at kind of where it was, you know, points off turnovers was huge. Field position was huge. Um, kind of recap the game, kind of give you the, the good pieces and where we got to improve. Start with special teams. We made a 42-yard field goal. I thought that was uh, – made it a two-score game at the time. I um, thought our kickoff co- coverage after the – the penalty that CJ should not have gotten uh, was good. We I think we tackled him at the 32. Uh, that was really important. Uh, we had a 14-yard punt return in the game. Uh, Preston did a nice job. Uh, he also fielded a punt, saved us some uh, position there at the end of the game. We downed a punt at the one. Um, and then we had a huge play. Malachi Ruffin made a huge play on a tackle where – I don't know if I've ever seen that, but I think it was a minus 11 on a punt return. So that was huge. Um and tackled him inside the 10. So, so two punts there. Thing that we got to improve on. We had a punt blocked. And it was poor technique. I and mean, we, we had we had blockers for everybody. And we just used poor technique. That's disappointing. High expectations for our punt team. I think we can be as good as anybody in the country. Um, and, but that was disappointing. Um, they had one really good kickoff return. They got out, I think, to the 36, 37. Um, and then uh, uh, another. We had two really ignorant penalties in the game we had one on a late hit on a kickoff return and the one where cj took his helmet off um defensively i thought the good was obvious three takeaways um uh, three three interceptions we had two good returns on those interceptions too and then malachi made a really nice play on the last one um our pass coverage you look at you always pay attention to yards per attempt they had 4.0 yards per attempt that was that's it's really good uh, i thought we got good pressure on the quarterback everybody wants to get kind of pile on their quarterback but we had people at his feet we had people around him all night and it affected him and then we were really good on third and fourth down um we started slow defensively missed some tackles there early you know i thought we misfit some things uh during the game and i, and I think during that drive we had two misfits but we, we had a bunch of missed tackles we had more missed tackles on that drive than we did the rest of the game combined and so uh, we got to clean that up and then we got to clean up some pass rush stuff where uh we need to finish. We need to finish better at the top of our rushes. Uh, offensively, the good. I thought we controlled the game. Um, you know, I said this afterwards, and we didn't lose it. You know, we didn't do anything offensively to lose the game. Had 10 points off takeaways. Ran the ball effectively. Um, things we got to improve on. Too many negative yards. Um, took a couple sacks that definitely should not have taken. Uh, pass game's got to be sharper. Um, and then we didn't finish, you know. I figure one of y'all will ask. The reason we didn't kick that field goal at the end of the game, it's really about we we're up 11, 17, 6. And so if you go up, you go up. You're, it's already a two score game. You go up 14, it really doesn't help you. And what, what can happen if you get a field goal blocked, then it really. So the play there is to, to run the ball. Now, what happened is that penalty really sh- set us back. And so the penalty kind of would have liked to finish in those last two drives better. Um, but players of the week, I didn't do this last week. I, I want to do it this week. Kind of our offensive lineman of the week was Zach Frazier. He had 14 knockdowns in the game, you know. And if you all you got to do, if you want to turn on the tape and see how somebody's supposed to play, watch him. Um, special teams player of the week was Malachi Ruffin. He had a, he he downed the punt at the one, and he had a big tackle that I talked about on punt on on the punt team as well. Uh, defense player of the week was Beanie Bishop. He had an interception, <clears throat> a really nice return, but he had seven tackles at the corner position. Came up and really tackled well for it for his position. Um, offense player of the week. I talked about the penalty, but I thought. Um, he ran the ball the best that he's ran it in his career in the in especially in the second half. I thought CJ Donaldson was was special in the game. He had eighteen rushers for 102 yards and a touchdown. But I thought when he ran and got behind his pads, like he he was really good. Um and then two guys that maybe don't show up on the or one of them showed up on the stat sheet, one of them doesn't, but we always give those blue collar awards and O line and D line is really where we won the game. And uh, Fatorma played his best game probably of his college career. He had 16 plays, and in those 16, he had two tackles and three assists, and really got good push up front. And the reason we took him is because of that, and and he really made a difference in the game. And then Doug Nestor, he had nine knockdowns in the game, played really, really physical, and he's playing the best football of his career. Um, 
scout team players of the week, so you guys know uh, Charlie K- Katarinczyk, uh Corey McIntyre, and Colin McBee. So Charlie was the offense. The defense was Corey McIntyre. And Corey McIntyre, um, he, he, he will play for us at some point this year, but he's got a really good future. Excited about him. And then Colin McBee does a really nice job on, on – scout special teams he started the last two weeks on kickoff return um and so those were the uh those were the awards for the week um and then so kind of moving on uh texas tech and so you flip the page backyard brawl won that game kind of move move, flipping over to the next um before we get into that gold rush game you know our fans were were critical last week and we need them this is the start of big 12 play you know, and this is um, our our last game in a three game home stretch, and we feel like if we can defend our home turf, then we got a chance to have a really good year. Um, it's also Hall of Fame weekend. You know, uh, football wise, Bruce Irvin. Um, you know, uh, got to know Bruce well. Uh, um, I want to congratulate him. Look forward to him being back here. Uh, he came back to the game last year as well. Obviously, played two years here, went on, had a great NFL career. Uh, so well earned honor for him. Then also, I'd be uh, I need to make sure I get this out there is our very own AD, Ren Baker, has been recognized as the distinguished alumni, very distinguished alumni for Southeastern Oklahoma State. So I want to make sure that's public news. All right. So we get that out there. Um, and so 2023 recipient there. Um, but Texas Tech, so, you know, they've had our number. And I think that'll probably be the, the, the story uh, this week is – it is what it is. Can't hide from it. They beat us four years in a row, and, and last year probably is, um, you know, a bad a performance I've ever been a part of, part of um, down in Lubbock. And and so start conference play versus those guys at home. They've, they've won the last two times they've come here. And and, and we know that. Our guys know that. Um, we were picked last in the conference. This is the first opportunity for us to, to prove the so-called experts uh, wrong. And we get we – get, uh, tech, and we get them here at home. A lot of respect for 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 that program. I she spent some time there. I think Joey's done a really good job, known him for a long time. Um, they got a very good football team. They played a tough schedule. Also, had to play at Wyoming, which is a tough venue. Uh, really a um, a hard game, especially in an opener. Played Oregon. Uh, we're up at both in both those games late in the fourth quarter with a chance to win. Uh, special teams. The thing that sticks out is they have the McNamara kid at punter and. Um, Seems like he's been there forever, but he's elite. He's as good as any punter in the country. Um, the field goal guy has a really strong leg. Uh, their best uh, receiver, their leading receiver, uh, Miles Price, their punt returner, we're going to have to tackle him. He's unique in the fact that he's really a strong guy after the catch. He's got good speed, but it really can break tackles. And then they've got two guys on kickoff return that can really run. Um, the elite speed. Uh, defensively, they're attacking group. They're veterans. If you look at the number of games that all these guys have played, it's a, it's a real veteran group. Uh, they got after us last year and really controlled the line of scrimmage on us. You know, one of the few teams last two years that I mean, they their their interior pieces really uh, really get after our interior pieces and um, and did a nice job versus us offensively. They got great skill players. If you look at it, three or four receivers that I think uh, can play for anybody in our league. They probably have the best group of receivers in our league. Um, nobody talks about the running back, but. Um, but he's 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 going to be an NFL player, and he's going to play in the league for a long time. Uh, Taj Brooks, um, he can pass protect, he can run inside, outside. He's really good. Um, the quarterback's playing his best football of his career that I've seen, um, and and they play really fast. And we better be ready for it. We didn't handle that very well last year, and so that's something that that we spent a lot of time working on. And this is our first opportunity versus a team that's going to tempo to see if see if we've got that issue fixed. Um, but like I said. A lot of respect for them. Third home game, finishing up a home stand, and uh, hopefully we can create the same type of uh, crowd and same type of atmosphere we had a, a week ago. So, with that, I'll take questions. Well, this is the first question is about yeah, so, yeah. So he, um, I think it's too early um, to say um, it's a low, it's a lower, it's an ankle injury, and I think a lot of it has to do with how he how he responds over the next few days. Uh, we won't play him unless he can u- utilize his best skill set, which is his athleticism. Um, so I think it's too early to, to tell. Um, if he can't go, then um, Nico will play. And, and Nico, um, there's a lot of trust with him in the locker room. Guys believe in him. Uh, it'll be huge for him. You know, Garrett didn't practice today. He got every rep. 
Uh, Garrett won't practice tomorrow. He'll get every rep. And so you'll see a much, much improved play by Nico um, when he gets the majority of the reps. Is, is Sean then the backup? Yeah, Sean Boyle will be the backup, yep. Mm-hmm. How much would Garrett need to practice? Well, I, th- I, I don't want to put a, a number of reps or days. I think the best answer I can give to that is is if he can move around and play like himself – then, then he'll play. If he can't, then he won't. And I think it's too early in the week to, to say. You know, some people bounce back from from these a little quicker than others. He's doing everything possible to get ready, um, but I think time will tell. What's the process you went through to kind of pare down and, and work with Nico on packages and things that you felt would work in that game in such a quick amount of time? Yeah. Well, I think that there's two different thought processes processes so when it immediately happens you really don't know what type of game you're going to have just yet right and so you you go back and we always go into the game with uh, a plan for the backup quarterback that he's practiced and you track all the stuff through spring brawl spring ball and fall camp and you quiz the guys on what they feel the most comfortable with and then what's the data back up and says they're good at and so you got that and it's on your call sheet um, and so you go to that first and then as time went by and you kind of, and you got a feel for what type of game it was going to be. And it was going to be a game where it was going to kind of be grinded it out and we were having success in the run game and they were struggling on offense. And so it gets into this game where you want to possess the ball and you want to play off the strengths. And so that we reduced that even more so. Um, and then we didn't use, um, a lot of the motions and shifts and stuff just cause he hadn't. He hadn't practiced them as much. Um, and so that that was kind of the two. First, we go right to what he's good at that was in the plan. And then once you fill out fill out the game, then, you know, we kind of reduce it even further. How, uh, you know, we've seen Nico come in twice, though. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think he would be like as, you know, the starter? Well, um, here's the thing. Like, uh, he has got really high-end ability. Um, he can run the football. Um, he's more of a – he showed good speed versus Duquesne, but he's he's more of a in between the tackles type of runner. He's a real physical. Uh, you can see that in high school. You know he was a tough tackle. Um, he he's really good um, with balls in between the hashes. Like he's got uh, good velocity on it. Uh, he throws a deep ball well. Um, he didn't hit. It, he didn't. He didn't do it as well. He didn't throw the ball down the field as well as he can in the game. Some of that's just timing issues. That when he practices, he'll be better. Um, and then he can do all the stuff in the RPO game. And so we have – our expectation is if he plays, that we'll be really good on offense. And, and that's – I think that's the expectation staff-wise, the expectation for the for the players on the offense side of the ball. If he starts, Sean – Sean, yeah, we'll be the two. He will. So how many more reps does he get practice-wise? Yeah, so Sean, will, he'll go. And, and so today he got the same now that Nico got a week, you know, the – previous weeks and tomorrow Sean will get those same reps and it's it, it equals about a quarter of the reps that's what we try to do uh, that's a good question we'll kind of figure out how this week goes well you know you need game and the fact that we played last week you know and um the this the, the the backyard brawl is a huge deal, you know, for our fan base in our state. Our players don't necessarily they get like I I try to educate them on the historical reference of the big backyard brawl and what it means, um, but it, it's it's I wouldn't say that they understand it like the twenty year season ticket holder or someone that grew up in the state of West Virginia, you know, and so uh, they're going to be able to put it to bed pretty quick just because it's next. I think it really is beneficial that we play Texas Tech next because they've had our number. Like, you can hit that right in the face. I mean, it is – I think, am I right, they're the only team, like, in the league that we played that we haven't beaten and, and that they've won the last two times here, which doesn't happen very often. So, um, and then if you watch that film, it wouldn't take you very long to get ready for this one because, you know, that was bad ball last year. Yeah, they all played. Um, 
EJ's role will increase. Traylon played some. His role increased. Um, Justin, yeah, Justin tried to go and still not 100%. Yeah, Justin Johnson, um, he practiced. We just we, we, we didn't do a whole lot today. I'll have a better idea tomorrow on him. And like I said, he tried to go on Tuesday, wasn't full speed. Tried to go on Wednesday, wasn't full speed. And so that's kind of the way we treat him most of the time. If they can't practice by Wednesday, it's really hard. You know, that's not necessarily a rule in ink. You know, there are some exceptions to that. But in general, that's kind of what we go by. Yeah, so he's gonna yeah he's gonna have surgery and he'll he'll miss the remainder of the year. Yeah, I told y'all I would tell you that. I, I apologize, I should have done that. So, um, you know, he's gonna have to to seek an appeal. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to seek a waiver on that. I think he's got a good case, but those things go to a committee, so you'll find you, you know it's hard to tell. Yeah, we, you know, if you look at it, um, and I tried to ki give you all a little bit of a, a heads up because I felt like that the D line played well through fall camp, um, and I think it's it's one. Of, I think I've said this before too. Is we went through fall camp, we knew we were pretty good on the O line, and um, a year ago it was really one sided. Like um, our O line won almost every day. Um, in this fall camp, it wasn't like that. Not that the O-line didn't still win some or win even a majority of the time, but it wasn't one-sided. It wasn't one-sided at all. And and so that was my first inclination that, okay, um, now when you look at it is we, we, we're rotating guys. Like if you look at Fatorma and, and Mike Lockhart, they both are playing at a high level. Fatorma played his best. Uh, Mike played really well. If you look, when Sean goes out, went out, then Tommy came in. Tommy leads our team in sacks and had a huge TFL. And if you look over the boundary, like nobody talks about Eddie Vester any, but he's the most consistent player on our team. Now, he and Zach Frazier, like those are the most consistent players on our team. Jalen Thornton had a huge TFL on the drive where we pinned him down at the one. Um, you know, Day Day Hawkins has given us some good snaps. You know, Hammond didn't play as much the other night, but he will. He will continue to play. And then Asani came back and did a nice job, had a couple tackles. And, and I thought for a guy that hasn't, you know, it wasn't like he played a whole lot last year. He played a little bit. We redshirted him. And then he's post what happened in February. So, you know, that's a really fast recovery. And he played well versus a, versus a good team on Saturday night. Do you like what you've gotten out of your tight ends? You know, Ryan, Pascal, yeah, so, yeah, we got to continue to get the ball to Cole. Um you know, the other night, just it, the way it played out, it just wasn't going to be a throw game, which which is tough. It's like I told the receivers after the game, listen, man, I know this is why you didn't you didn't come here, but enjoy the win. You know, like we're going to need them. We're going to need. We got to get the ball. We got to continue to get the ball to Cole. Uh, I thought Traylon did some nice things. You know, had some he had some really impactful point of attack blocks, um, and then Cole did a nice job. You know, he's learned to play a better pad level, and so he's. That, that that position, I mean, they're out there every snap. Sometimes we're playing both of them at the same time. So, they're getting a lot of playing time, and, and they're helping us on offense for sure. Doug mentioned the line of scrimmage last year. Has that been a common thread in some of these Texas Tech games, or are there other things that you can pinpoint that you can look at? Uh, well, they've beaten us handily twice. 19, and last year they beat us handily. And then the other two years, 20 and 21, we lost right at the end of the game. You know, like um, in 20 – down there, we had a fumble right at the – you know, we were going to, to take the lead. And we had a fumble, and it ended up being a, a scoop and score. Um, so, really unfortunate. Kind of flipped right there. Um, and then 21, I think we had it third and goal. And, and fourth and goal, we don't score. If we score, you know, we win the game. So, um, so um, I think the, the common theme is is they've, they've moved the ball on us pretty well. And then – and then we haven't ran the ball as as well as we need to be able to run the football to win football games versus those guys, you know. And so their tempo has been an issue. Um, we spent a lot of time during the off season on these guys, so so hopefully it'll show up. Uh, 
They do. Yeah, they do a good mix. You know, they're still throwing the ball more than they're running it. But the running back special, you know, they're going to try to get him touches. You know, like, he's probably the best player in our league that nobody talks about. You know, he really is. I mean, I think he's right up there at the top of our league for running backs. He's really productive. Um, I was telling I was telling our defense staff that yesterday. I think he's the best player in our league that nobody talks about. In the conversation down there for the quarterbacks, Shuck and Morton, you got a plan for both, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Morton played against last year. Uh, if they watch that tape, they're going to want to play him because, like, I don't know if he – he may still not have an incompletion. Um, but um, both those kids are more capable. You know, both of them won Big 12 games. They don't change a whole lot, you know, depending on who's in there. So, um both of them are good players. Both of them are quality Big 12 players. So, I don't think their their plan of attack really alters whoever's in the game. Hey, Christian, in general, the quarterback, always been like that, right? But um, now with Portal and guys wanting to go and play and that being a coveted position, it just seems like it'd be naturally hard to have good backups. Yeah, because it's hard. Keep them. Um, not, not, it's not a diamond of you guys, but maybe the exception, actually. But has that changed or has it always been? Different? No, I think more so. You know, I think the transfer portal – has I don't necessarily if it's transcended the quarterback position like it has done your roster management because quarterbacks have always been if they're not playing then they leave you know and it just happened to be most of the time they were transferring down if they'd already redshirted um, with the, the ascension of the portal now they're you know they can they can transfer some of them can transfer multiple times um, but it's hard it's hard to have depth in any position <laughs> honestly but at quarterback where you're only going to play one majority of the, of the snaps. You know, I think it would be – I'd be interested to see, and this would be a good study, is how many backup quarterbacks are either true freshmen or redshirt freshmen because I bet there's a high number of them. Um, just thinking about it as you ask that question. It's got to be kind of delicate to manage that too and make sure that one knows it could be any minute, but also that you know, he's not the guy, right? Um, yeah. Is it, is it a, it's a physical thing, I'm guessing, but you almost have to treat them differently than a backup running back or backup receiver or anything like that. You do. I think the 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 transparency has to be there. You know, I think you have to be transparent about why they did or did not win the job, and then you got to continue their development. You know, I think any any, and I don't know. This is for any employee or any uh, player, but more so probably at quarterback is they got to know that you believe in them. They got to know that there's a plan for their development. You know, and they got to feel that they're getting better. And so I think that those things give you a chance. Um, you know what we've done, what we've what we've done for our young quarterbacks, and it's paid off. You know we had some successful backups at Troy when we had to play. Is you know like today at the end of at the end of practice, the guys that played in the game Saturday night went in and we 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 scrimmaged. We didn't tackle to the ground, but we scrimmaged for about thirty plays, and we'll do the same thing Tuesday. And Sean Boyle got every rep a week ago. Nico and Sean split those. But Sean got every rep. Tomorrow we'll do the same thing. Wednesday we'll do it. And those are ways to log reps, you know, for Sean in the um, if he was needed to play, you know. And, and, and what we do is we, we take what he, what he can handle, what he's good at, um, and we rep those today. And he'll get 11-on-11 work as we go through the week. And so – and – and we try to do that with all of our developmental guys. You know, they're part. They're in a lifting group where they're going through an off season. Guys that we feel like are probably going to redshirt that may only play the four games. We try to put them in an off season program during the season um, where they don't go to meetings. They lift instead. And then we do these, you know, either fundamental work or these scrimmage type type situations at the end of practice where they continue to get reps and they're getting coached. Because that's where you lose guys if you don't coach them. You know, and you're going to lose some, but the ones that that you really believe in that have a future, man, you got to spend some time with them. You got to coach them. They got to get reps. Oh yeah, he was a little nervous on Saturday night. You know, I kind of looked at him. I was like, hey, you know, you're next, right? And he kind of gave me the big eyes, and uh, <laughs> and so because I don't think he had really thought about that, you know, uh, and so now he'll 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 be. He'll be ready. He'll be ready if called upon, and it's it's really on us as coaches to to get him prepared, but also put him in a situation where where he can have success. Well, you know, in hindsight, you know, it it it's worked out. You know, he's um, you know, I was really hoping to play him a little bit more 
against Duquesne. Um, but just kind of the way the game worked out, he got a bunch of snaps, and he's going to continue to get better. You know, the other night he did some things really well, man, but he also did some things that you could tell that, you know, he's a redshirt freshman and he hadn't played a whole lot, you know, and so he'll get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that you got it in this the way the rules are now. I mean, you got to have two ready, you know. And so, you know, Garrett he 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 does he does play, and he's got a lot of passion. So he puts his body at risk sometimes. Like he got hurt trying to push for extra yards, which he shouldn't do, but he did. And so, you know, you can't limit what's make what makes him great. But not not only because of the way he plays, but I think just. If you look across college football, a lot of people are playing multiple quarterbacks, and and there's a lot more injuries to that position for whatever reason than there has been in the past. And so we knew that at some point, and I, and I, and I was really clear with Nico about this: is like you're going to be you're going to be called upon, and it's real easy because you just point back to the Oklahoma State game, you know, where you had to play basically all but two snaps of the of the second half in that game too. So, um, but we he's been prepared and and. That's something that we thought about, but not necessarily because of the way Garrett plays, just because the way it's gone in general. Somebody else was asking a question. Talk about Mark Wilson and just you know how mm-hmm. good he is at his position. Um, how beneficial has it been to have Nick Singleton at Penn State on your you know on the other yeah. side already and having a game like Saturday? Well, I, I will say this too. I thought Hammond was really tough to tackle for Pitt. You know, especially early on, like he, those guys at Pitt. They run the ball really hard. And so, if you think about it, we've played kind of the who's who of running backs over the last three or four years. You know, Brees Halls, the uh, Robinson kid, I mean, at Texas. I mean, we, so we've played elite running backs. Singleton was good, too. And, and like I said, the Hammond kid played really well against us last weekend. And so, um, our guys are going to be ready. But but Tyus Brooks is, you know, I think, I think he's a special player. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? I'll take this. No, it just um, just seemed blocking for your receivers could have been better sometimes. Kind of close to maybe breaking some, but did make some. Yeah. On the edge, made some plays. So I actually thought this was the best week we've we've blocked on the perimeter. There was one where if Devin would have finished it, it it was split, and that's the one you probably saw. Um, it was early. I can't remember if it was in the second or third quarter. But if Devin would have finished his block on a safety, then then CJ would have scored. But overall, I thought Preston Fox blocked really well. Uh, Cortez Braham had his best um, had his best blocking. Devin missed two, but I thought he was physical. Hudson really got in the mix and and battled on the perimeter too. And I credit those guys, man. They once they kind of got a feel for what it was going to be in the second half too, and they were good on the sideline and and they went out of there and competed. But um, it's probably the best. Can it be better? Probably so, Mike. But I thought it. I thought those guys competed and, and did a pretty nice job overall. They did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's what they had to do. And um, they would like to catch the ball. That's why they came here. But they want to win too. And so they'll get up. There'll be plenty of opportunities down the road. All right. Thank you. All.